Welcome to Celebrity Tastemakers. I'm Lisa Mateo. From the hottest restaurants to local dives, celebrities always know where to eat, and here's your chance to join them. Come along for the ride as our guests share their favorite meal, and the chefs that make them teach you the recipe. That's all part of Celebrity Tastemakers, your reservation to food and fame. Being a tough guy when you have a heart of gold shows both your talent and your character. Having an audience on the edge of its seat and a community embrace you for your generosity has been what life is about for Vincent Pastore. Known by millions as Big Pussy from The Sopranos, he's also killed it singing on Broadway and earning more than 150 acting credits in his career, never turning away from those in need. We're riding to a familiar place and learning what's made Vinny Pastore the hard-hitting, soft-talking pussycat who's not only a wise guy, but also a tastemaker. Vincent Pastore! Hi, Lisa. How are you? Very good. Where are we going today? Can we go to Little Italy? Anywhere you want. Lamella's. I like it over there. What do you it's like good. to eat there? The veal marcella. Sometimes the Francesca, but today I'm in the mood for the marcella. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. Who's driving? This guy? <laughs> Back to when Matt Dillon and his brother Kevin persuaded you to be an actor. Didn't take much convincing, did it? Wow, that's that's a story. I didn't think you were going to hit me with that. I was running a bar in Nourish Show on North Day Avenue. Maddie and Kevin and Paul, the brothers, we were watching the Public Greenwich Village on TV with Frank Vincent okay. and Eric Roberts. And Maddie says, you should be an actor. And he leaned over and he looked at Kevin and he said, set him up with Charles Massey at Curtis Brown Management right over here mm -hmm. at 10 Astor Place. And I was mopping the floors two days later in the bar and Kevin called me and he said, you got an appointment. And that's how it all started. I went to NYU and I started shooting student films. And the first job that really took off was a movie called True Love by Nancy Savoca. And we went to Sundance. So I kind of said, I think this is what I want to do. I hooked up with some real good teachers, Tommy Waits from American Buffalo fame, and Dominic Chinese was one of my teachers, mm -hmm. and I studied at the HB studio with Michael Beckett, and I really just went for it. And I, I was 42 years old when I made this transition. Chicago, bullets over Broadway. Life on Broadway has been good to you, and you do it. After The Sopranos, I was getting some major movies, uh, The Hurricane, Serving Sarah Made with John Favreau and Vince Vaughn, but I wanted to go back to my basic roots, which was theater, which I studied in the 70s. And I landed um, Chicago with Aida Totoro. Then I landed Bullets Over Broadway with Woody Allen. What did you learn from him, aside from the fact that he didn't like your mustache? Yeah, how do you know that? He didn't <laughs> like my mustache. He said to me at the first rehearsal, is that a prop or is that yours? How do you so I said to Woody, I said, it's mine. He says, well, are you going to shave it off for the show? And did you? No. <laughs> Woody Allen is a wonderful person, great to work with. Susan Stroman, what a director, what a person. She came into my life. What happened with me is I wind up getting cancer hmm. while I was in rehearsal. Right. Prostate cancer. And I told my doctor, I don't care how you schedule this out, I'm not giving up a Broadway show. Woody went to do a movie up in Providence and we had a break for three months. That's when I had the prostate removed. And I didn't want to tell them that I had cancer because I was afraid that they were going to get rid of me. So one day I was having a bad day and I went up to Susan and I said, I'm having after effects from my radiology this morning. I'm really sorry. I said, do you want to replace me? And she looked me at me, Susan Stroman, and she says, you're going to make open at night, you're going to make the Tonys, and you're going to make clothes at night. But you you're know? doing well now. Everything yeah, I'm great. doing great. I'm doing great. You had a small part in Goodfellas, but it taught you a life lesson about improv. Yeah, you did your, your homework. Marty Scorsese would come up to you and say, you don't have any lines in the script, but give me something. The final cut in the movie, it looks like I don't say anything. And I had to do 15 different takes with uh, Tony Darrow and Ray Liotta, and there was one take where, where Ray actually smacked me. He said, what'd you give me fur coats for? And Marty <laughs> went up to him and said, what'd you hit the guy for? And then I sat there 
we were shooting at the uh, the bamboo lounge scene on top of uh, the Winter Garden where Cats was playing, and I watched the scene where Pesci hits Tony with the bottle. You think I'm funny? Funny I'm like how? And I was watching these guys work, and I realized, and Frank Vincent taught me so much. Mm -hmm. I wound up doing 11 movies with Frank, that if you feel like saying something, go for it in a film. Because it comes from here. Because it comes from here, it's real. Like what we're doing now, this is a, an honest conversation. That's what good film, that's what good entertainment's about. You know, they used to call me the Upgrade King. Upgrade King, yeah. why is that? Well, I would be on a set as an extra, and I said, I'm not putting up with this, and I'd just go up and say a line or something, and nine out of 10 times, I'd get a contract. And they'd thank you. Yeah, they'd give, me, they'd give me an upgrade. <laughs> there was a scene in Carlito's Way, we were all at the Copa, mm -hmm. and Sean Penn was saying to Pacino um, about Penelope Miller, she was dancing with somebody, and he used that Italian negative word, and I got up, and I walked across the dance floor, and I said to, Sean, what'd you say? And then Brian De Palma said, cut. And Brian De Palma said, who told that guy to do that? And Al spoke up and said, no, man, it works. Keep it in. And if you see the movie, you see eight of us walking over and, and go, confronting Sean and Al. And De Niro always used to upgrade me. I never forget, I was out in um, France working with uh, Luc Besson on The Family with Michelle Pfeiffer and Robert De Niro. We were having a little party for Bobby in Luke's restaurant. Luke said to me, Bobby wants you to walk him back to the house. And I said, I never thanked you for everything you did for me. And he looked at me and he gave me a kiss on the cheek and he said, you did good. Films directed by Martin Scorsese. You have yeah. theater with Woody Allen. You've shared the screen with people like De Niro, Denzel. Who's brought out the best in you? James Gandolfini. You know, you, uh, we miss Jimmy. And every time I, I mention his name, I get very emotional. Mm -hmm. But Jimmy taught us a lot, and he also taught uh, us how to share. Because Jimmy used to say, this show isn't about me, it's about us. It's about the ensemble. I get Jimmy's watch out. Do you? Yeah, Jimmy gave all of us this watch. What's the most rewarding experience when you think back to that time? the compassion and the love from everybody, mm -hmm. that I was actually the first lead character to, to leave that show. Tony kept saying to um, David, why are you doing this to Vinny? And David said, I'm not doing it to Vinny, I'm doing it to his character. His character's gotta go. As a viewer, yeah. not as your character, what did it mean to you when that screen went black? Well, the first time it aired, I didn't see it. I was doing a movie with Talia Shire in LA called mm -hmm. Pizza Will Bullets. And uh, TMZ came up to me the next day and they asked me the same question. I mm -hmm. said, I didn't see it, what are you talking about? Then I saw it and I said, David did that because he doesn't know what he wants to do next. So he left it up in the air. Now that Jimmy's gone, David says, Tony Soprano was killed, Tony's dead. Tony got killed that night. That's what he says. We had a dinner one night, James, Tony Sirico, and little Stephen and David, and we just had come from Stephen's mother's wake, and they were talking about Sopranos. And Tony Sirico said to David, you better get Vinny back in. And David said, we will. They were gonna do Sopranos again. They were talking about it. You decided your own fate on Celebrity Apprentice. You resigned. Donald Trump didn't have to fire you. He even asked you to come back. Yeah. And share your experience Donald, with Mr. Trump. I like Donald. I like him a lot. I, I didn't like everything he said, and I don't like everything he says, but Donald Trump has been good to me in my life. And we're going to Lamella's, and at Lamella's, I, I gave my ex wife, Nancy Jean, a check for $50,000 for the Lust Garden Foundation for her charity for her husband, mm -hmm. Mitchell Burke, who died. And I got that money because of Donald Trump. The next week, Pierce Morgan wanted me off the show because I was his competition. Hmm. So he asked me to go rat. I ran into Donald and he told me, why did you quit? I was going to fire Pierce that night. And I said, well, why don't you give me a hint? You search for the perfect meatball and holy meatballs. 
Yeah. Your good friend Cha Cha led you there to Mulberry Street. Yeah. What Did I, you ever find that perfect meatball? The perfect meatball was my mother's meatball, and I have to say that waking up on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. smelling my mother. Meatballs in the garlic and oil in the kitchen. She'd make the gravy. We dunked the bread. By the time dinner came, we were full. But that's not like that anymore. No one wants to cook the meatballs. Nobody wants to cook the meatballs. In fact, I tell you something, Lamella's meatballs are really good. So why don't we order some? If we ever get there, <laughs> I don't know this driver over here. He's taking us a long way to get to Lamella's. <laughs>